Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church. Today is the 4th of August, Anno Domini 2020. It is a Tuesday night. It is also my wife and my anniversary, our 41st, as we celebrate wedded bliss for so many years. Tonight we celebrate in the Psalm, Psalm 118. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. For those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side, I will fear not. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surround me. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surround me surrounded me on every side. And in the name of the Lord I caught them off. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord I caught them off. I was pushed back hard so that I was falling. But the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening Give thanks to the Lord, O my soul. Worship Him and trust His mercy and truth, for they are as great as He Himself is, and they endure forever. Let the Lord be your meditation and your song in the house of your pilgrimage, because He has given you strength and has set before you the hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And tonight, our study in the seventh chapter of Romans is verses 9 through 10. Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that, that was intended to bring life actually brought death. So far the text. Once I was alive apart from the law? Interesting. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? Now, we can assume that St. Paul is talking about his personal experience. Once I was alive apart from the law. In other words, he thought that everything was just fine, but as he learned the law, it revealed his sin. His conscience became sore with all that he learned, and the commandment that he thought he was obeying became the one that showed that he had not obeyed it at all. Think of the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. What does all things include? How often do we think about God at all when we are about our daily task in life? How often do we trust God that when we go through the next intersection we won't be hit by a car? I mean, it's so easy just to ignore the fact that God is always with us. He's watching over us. We sometimes become lack or lazy in recognizing all the gifts He's given us, health and home and life, food that we eat, clothing we wear. It's so easy just to think that by our own hands we've accomplished this, 
and yet it's all God's, and God allows us to be stewards of it. But do we think of ourselves as stewards or as owners? And as owners, do we think that we are in control of it, and that all that is good and all that is right and quality of life is really up to us? And so Paul says, Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, then sp sin sprang to life. All of a sudden you realize there's sin. But there's a second part of this. As we realize that something is against God's will or anybody else's desire, think of a little kid that's told not to get into the cookie jar. As soon as your back is turned, what do they do? What about adults that are told, you don't have to wear a mask? That's fine. But what if you tell them you have to wear a mask? Then they'll come into your area and... The moment they get a chance, they'll pull down the mask, putting everybody at risk. It's the sinful nature within us, our fallen nature, that wants to be disobedient, thinking that we don't have to be. I mean, even Romans 13 obey government authorities. The government's kind of laid some laws on their feet for the health and nature and, and goodness of other people. But do we obey them, or do we call them satanic? Say the devil made makes us do this, rather than God utilizing people to bring about health and peace. And so, brothers and sisters, I encourage you to take a look at the laws, and those laws include God's laws as well as civil laws, and realize they're there for a purpose. They're not telling you to not believe in Jesus, not to obey God. Don't confuse civil laws with spiritual laws. But remember, civil laws were also given by God. And that we are placed in a position. Now Paul has a conundrum. Maybe he thought he was obeying the first commandment. Maybe he thought he was obeying the second commandment not to misuse the name of the Lord your God. To use it as a license to do whatever you want. Maybe you've done that too. But whatever. Remember, you can go to Jesus. He will forgive you. He wants to you to know the peace that passes all understanding. And so he designs these laws to convict us, to have us turn to the cross, to seek the blood of Jesus for our salvation, not to look in here for it, but to look to him. And then he encourages us to share that love of Jesus with others. And so sometimes what we have to do is difficult, like caring for our fellow brothers and sisters and those not of the household of faith. But remember, as a Christian, you are a witness to all people, including the household of the faith. May God bless you and keep you in his love and grant you his peace. God's blessings.